My name's Ethan Lewis, and this is my college car. The year is 1967. New music from the Beatles, the Doors, and the Rolling Stones blares out from the two speakers in your car as you make your way down to the theater to see Sean Connery reprise his role as Agent 007 in You Only Live Twice. As Strawberry Fields Forever comes to a close, you see a brand new Camaro SS pull up across from you at the red light. You wonder how much power they make with the biggest Chevy small block yet. 350 cubic inches? That's 61 more cubes than you have in your 289 Mustang. The Camaro driver sees you and gives a nod. You nod back as the light turns green. It's 6.50, and the movie starts at 7. You let the small block forward make some noise as you hurry to get to the theater. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of College Cars. If you didn't pick it up from the extended intro, this is a 1967 Mustang Coupe. Ethan, the owner, is a psychology major with a minor in chemistry at the University of Alabama. Like many people who are into cars, or simply have a nice car, he grew up around his dad and grandfather who both dabbled in cars. Ethan's Mustang has a 289 small block Ford V8 with a few slight modifications that I'll get to later. The 1967 model was the first significant design change for the Mustang since its 1964 debut. One reason for the redesign was to allow a big block V8 to be crammed under the hood of the original pony car, likely to compete with the 396 Camaro. The Mustang was offered with three different engine choices in 1967, ranging from a 200 cubic inch inline 6 to a 390 cubic inch big block V8. The 289 was the middle option, available with either a two barrel or one of two four barrel carburetors. This Mustang was born with a 289 4-barrel and an automatic transmission. The engine that is in it now is believed to be original to the car, but it has had several changes made. As you can see here, an Edelbrock aluminum intake has replaced the factory intake, and an Edelbrock 4-barrel carburetor has taken place of the factory auto light. It also has headers and an aftermarket exhaust that has a great, but not too loud sound. The Mustang also has a roller cam and rockers to finish off the engine mods, and it is lowered all the way around by about an inch. It rides and handles nicely, especially for a 50 year old car. I was expecting to be jarred around due to the drop suspension, but it rode smoothly and the tires didn't rub. It also stayed flat in corners and felt like it wanted to be pushed harder, although with manual brakes it would not be a good decision to do that. It also has manual steering, but as most people who have driven a car with manual steering will tell you, it doesn't make a difference once you get above 10 miles an hour. The first generation Mustang Coupe is a great car to get into the car hobby with. Mustangs have an enormous amount of aftermarket and stock replacement support, and they're not prohibitively expensive to buy in the first place. Find one with little rust and you're golden. Of course, you won't get a huge return on your investment either. But you can daily drive a Mustang Coupe and not go broke. Lee Iacocca revolutionized the car industry in 1964 when he revealed the 1964.5 Mustang at the New York World's Fair. Coincidentally, the 64.5 Mustang happens to be Ethan's dream car. Iacocca dreamed that the Mustang would appeal to enough people to be a feasible car. I can't imagine he ever dreamed Ford would sell a million Mustangs within a year and a half or that it would still be going strong over five decades later. It's a great American story of a man who had an idea and just went for it. Seriously. He told Henry Ford II about it and Henry's response was, if it doesn't sell, you're fired. That's not exactly what he said, but I like to keep my channel PG. Lee Iacocca is a legend in the automotive world, whether for creating the Mustang or for bringing Chrysler back from the brink. Ethan's Mustang is part of that legacy, and that's a good thing, whether you're into imports, Camaros, Mustangs, or something else entirely. Now you're back in 1967. 
you buy your ticket for You Only Live Twice, and think about the Mustang that was in Goldfinger. As you walk in the theater, a Corvette Stingray rumbles up behind you and pulls in beside your Mustang. You glance for a 427 badge, but don't see one. The thought of racing enters your mind, but you think better of it. Thanks for watching.